Hello everyone and today I'm going to show you how to create this sort of pattern that I used in this render. And so first what we're going to want to do is create a geo, dive into that, create an add swap, and just place a point at zero zero. And so next we're going to create a solver. And let's just highlight, turn that on. And we're going to have to actually put the sub steps up quite a lot. Um, it'll make a lot more sense once we start seeing the result. It's because we need a higher resolution of points uh, to have uh, a pleasing smooth result. Otherwise, we'll get weird jagged lines and it does not look great. So let's just dive into here and put a point wrangle and plug the previous frame into the first input of the point wrangle. So we're going to need a few things. We're going to start with a uh, seed. So let's do float seed equals chf seed. And there. So what we're doing here is the chf is a channel and it'll create a spare parameter down here once we click this button just like that. What I did is I also actually multiplied the seed by 10,000 uh, because the way we're using the seed, we're going to actually just offset a random fun. We're going to offset a random function rather than actually using a seeded function. Um, and it gives a similar result, even though it's not technically a seed in the, in the correct sense. But anyway, let's create the float R. So float R, the R is, um, the R is pretty much the core point of this in the, it's a value. All it's going to be is a um, Perlin noise value and it will just increment over time as we step through the simulation. So I'm going to use P noise. This so the there is noise and P noise. P just stands for periodic, so this will repeat. I could just use the normal noise um, without the P, but it does not matter which one you use. And so, what you can do if you don't know how to use something is if you hit F1 when you're highlighted over the function, it'll bring up this handy helping helping window. And so, what we're going to do is we're going to use this one so it's going to return a float or a vector in this case it's going to return a float and what we're going to do is give it a float value so this is the place that we are in the noise and this is the period of the noise and so let's type these in so for the position, we're going to do add frame. This is going to get the value of the frame that we're at in this timeline. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add the seed to it. So all we're doing with this is we're just going to jump pretty far ahead. So as we move this seed forward, it's going to jump very far in the noise pattern. <clears throat> and then we need to add a comma. And I'm actually going to use um, a period of zero. Uh, so it's actually not going to have any period. It's going to be completely random. But that's okay. So then what we need to do is we need to multiply this by 360. Since we're going to be putting this in a sign function, we have to be able to have a full 360 degrees in a sine and a cosine. So we're going to multiply this R value by 360 to get the desired value that we actually need. And then I'm going to make something called float scale. And this is just going to scale the overall simulation. And we'll make another float channel and just call it scale. If we click on this, it'll create this spare parameter and we got a scale. So we have to actually move this scale up to begin with or else we won't see anything. So let's do that. And now here comes the fun part is so uh, when we do at P, this is going to get the point position and we're going to add to it. And we're going to use set. So the set function is a handy way to create a vector without creating a separate variable. And so we're going to add a vector three 
And so let's do cosine r. So we want the cosine value since we're essentially rotating around a circle. Um, we're going to use cosine for the x value and we're going to or cosine for the x value and sine for the z value. And so as we move along this ratio of a circle with cosine and sine, uh, we're going to use a noise value. So it's going to basically just move around a circle back and forth. And so as it moves back and forth, the position's actually going to jump as well. So it's going to jump randomly in a smooth way around a circle. It'll end up creating these beautiful looping patterns. So let's continue adding these. We don't need any Y position. You could if you wanted to, but for this, we're just going to have it stay flat. And then we put Z, <clears throat> we put sign for the uh, Z value. And now this should actually work. Let's jump up. And the point is moving very quickly and it's a bit hard to see. All right, so what we're gonna do that'll make it a lot easier to see is let's merge this, this input one and then we're gonna create a, um, we're gonna create a merge node and we'll just merge the two inputs. This will give a uh, trail-like pattern, which will make it a lot easier to see what's happening. Let's just move step forward. There we go. So now we can start seeing these uh, circular patterns. It's still kind of hard to see because they're just points, but since they're, all the points are being created in an order, we can actually connect them. So if we use an add, another add node and just connect it to the end of the solver and highlight it, if you go to polygons and do polygons by group, it'll create a trail. And this is actually why we needed all those sub steps, because as you can see, um, these are still a bit uh, jagged. So we're going to have to increase the sub steps even more to get a smoother result. So let's do that. Go into the solver and let's try 150. That's quite a lot more and just reset it and then move it forward again. It'll take a bit of time um, because it's uh, not exactly the easiest simulation, but it's not too difficult. And if we turn off the points visualization, we can see these beautiful patterns. Um, and that's all you have to do to make these nice flowing, these nice flowing shapes. And so in the next tutorial, I'll actually show you how I rendered my uh, the thumbnail image for this. It won't be exactly the same, but it'll give you a good idea on how to render something like this. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching. Um, I would like to thank my uh, Patreon supporters. It means a lot. And if you would like to join Patreon, I'll leave a link in the description. If you'd like to su subscribe as well, that would be great. And like if you like, dislike if you disliked it. Um, have a good day.